Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is Wednesday, which means it is Write It Out Wednesday. We come on on the first and third Wednesdays of every month where we come to put you back at the top of your writing list. We know so many things get in the way, so many other things come up, and somehow that writing just seems to get pushed back. But today on Wednesday, we're putting you back at the top. We're making sure that we put your writing a priority. And so here we are on this third Wednesday of July. So how you doing? Is it hot out there? <laughs> so welcome. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Valerie McDowell. I'm a writer, editor, author, book coach, and consultant. I work with writing and time challenge people, helping them get their stories told and their books published. And since about 2019, late 2018, I've helped about 22 plus authors go from idea to publish in as little as six months or even three months sometimes. And so that's what I do, that is my passion. I've been writing since I was a little girl and um, writing and words and just all kinds of things. I love to read, which is part of it as well, you know, have always been a passion of mine. So um, I just love coming on here, helping you to understand how to get your books out of your mind, out of your heart, out of your soul and onto the printed page. Hey, Sandra, good to see you. And so here we are going to be talking about, I uh, gave a little preview earlier um, that we're going to be talking about something that just popped out to me. It's been a, a quite a month here, but you know, we are still here. Hey, Brenda, good to see you. But tonight we're going to talk about something. So everybody be cool, be calm. It's going to, we're going to talk about what happens or what to do when the bottom falls out what to do when the bottom falls out. You're like, wait, what? What that got to do with anything? Well, let me just give you a little background because part of being a writer, part of being an author, part of being a good storyteller is that you got to have stories. So I have been on this um, kind of month long uh, challenge um, event, I guess, as if I'm on a, a game show and I have to go through these challenges, one of which was the AC, which wanted to conk out on me at the beginning of the month where we were having like, what, 95 degree days every day. So we dealt with that. And then just recently, and my trusty rogue, it's like that I love that I've had about 12 years now. I was driving it and it was like, something feels loose. Like, is the bottom falling out? So that's where I get that title from because something felt loose under there. And I was just like, what in the world is going on? It's like, I just got this done. I just got that done. And I'm one of those people, I, I take care of my cars. I've had cars forever. You know, I even have a car, I call it my Xbox. I've got 275,000 miles on it, y'all, okay? So we be holding on to these things because I, they, they they drive good, you know? It's like, I love my cars. So anyway, with all this bottom situation happening, I'm like, what, what I got to do? So tonight, I want to share with you because that made me think about some other things because everything makes me think about writing, about our books, about what's going on in our lives, about what's happening. And so I wanted to share some things um, about that tonight, you know, because you never know what's what's going to happen or, you know, how your day is going to go, you know, because you can plan, you know, you can get up, you can have full stools, meditate, do whatever it is you do, plan out your day, you know, have your list of three things that you're going to get done that I've shared with you before. But then other things happen that come out of nowhere, you totally unexpected, didn't plan for it, but you have to deal with it. Okay. So, um, how did I liken it to writing? Well, again, the title of what we're sharing tonight is, uh, what do you do when the bottom falls out? So, like I said, I like to connect this to my writing and from my live training, I did a live training last week. And one of the things that people have said and often say when I do trainings or I do webinars is that I ask the question, how long have you been wanting to write a book? So I got answers from five years, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years. Someone said 50 years, y'all. 50 years. Oh my God. So what do you do with 50 years of wanting to get your book out? So I thought about how did that connect to my situation? So tonight I want to give you five strategies as five strategies to get to the other side when the bottom falls out, because it's stuff is going to happen. Okay. And so my first point tonight is take five. Okay. We're going to give you five strategies, but the first thing is to take five. And what does that mean? Well, take five is my way of saying that there's always a solution to every problem. 
Okay, there's always a solution to every problem. Now, I'm a big reader, as you can see, I'm in my office where I have lots of books on my shelves. And so I'm reading this book now by Ray Dallow called Principles for Life and Business. And in it, at the very beginning of the book, he talks about the five second rule. And I, you know, the first time I read it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I really love that. And one of the things he talks about is that, that when something happens that normally or usually the answer is already inside of you. You already know what you need to do, usually within the first five seconds of you thinking about something. Okay, so I want you to think about that. Think about some of the issues that you've dealt with and think about how you've responded. Didn't that answer come pretty pretty much in that five seconds? Because the first thing I thought about when I felt like the bottom of my car was like, might be time to get a new car. But for the next couple of weeks, I was like, oh, do I want a new car? What should I do? Do I want this? Do I want to do that? Maybe I could trade it in. Should I trade it in? Maybe I give it to somebody else. Oh, maybe I don't like all of these things. But that first thought that I had about that did actually come in those first five seconds. And I was like, hey, you might be onto something. And so rather than doing what I just shared that I did, but what we also do is we start rethinking everything that happened. You know, if a situation occurred, you know, a relationship broke down, you're like, okay, what happened? Whose fault is this? What could have been done differently? You know, 15 million different things we come up with you know, rather than allowing that five seconds to kind of steer you in the direction you need to go. Because even in relationships, even with jobs, you know, like you talk to somebody on the phone, you know, and I've heard, and it's a blessing that people's like, I knew when I heard your voice, I knew when I started talking to you that you were the person I wanted to work with, you know, but you also get that same thing when it's not the right person. You know, when it's a situation where you're like, Nah, I don't need to go. I don't need to go there. I don't need to be with that person. I don't need to be in that setting. You know, you know immediately. It's like that's your God-given sense that this is what you should do or this is what you shouldn't do. And you know it. It's just like like when kids, like we, we can always say that you do not have to take a, a, teach a child to do wrong. Like when they're little, it's like going for the cookie jar. You can say, don't do it. And they'll look at back at you and they'll still go for it because they're like, no, I'm getting that. You know, so it's like, you know, they knew, they knew to look back because they knew what they were doing was wrong in those seconds that they were doing it, you know? And so we do know those things. So the thing is take five, take those first five seconds, you know, and even if it's five minutes, those first five seconds of those five minutes are usually that peace area before you bring all the other stuff in that's going on in your life, before you allow, you know, yourself to talk yourself out of doing that thing. You know, like sometimes you hear, you know, message, you read a book, uh, you you hear a promotion, you you watch a webinar, you know, like, boom, this this is what I've been waiting for. But then you start, well, is this the right time? Maybe I'm not going to have time. Do I want to do this? And you talk yourself out of doing the thing that you said you've been waiting 5, 10, 15, 50 years to do, <laughs> you know, because it's like you allow, you know, just everything else to get in the way of what your heart already knows that you should be doing. Okay. And the thing about it is, when you're a person of faith like I am, or rather if you're a person of faith like I am, you know, the thing is God wants you to make a decision, you know? And if you're, you know, doing the right thing, you know, if you know you want to, based on what you know, based on, and you make a decision as opposed to not making a decision, then God's going to be with you anyway, okay? He's going to make sure. That's why Romans 8 and 28 says, all things are going to work together for good. You know, to them that love him are called according to his purpose. So you have to be connected first for that to work out. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like make a decision. Because the thing is, people who don't make a decision, decisions end up getting made for you. And it may not be exactly what you wanted. So make a decision. Go with your gut. It's just like a lot of times, particularly as women, we don't go with our gut. Sometimes we know we shouldn't have went out with that person. We know we shouldn't have did that. And we don't go with it. And then we're like, ah. Oh, now I got to get out of this. <laughs> oh God, why did I do this? You know? And it's just like, and it might be years before you get out of something. So take those five, okay? Five seconds, y'all. You know what you want. Your heart knows. Let it lead you where you need to go. You know, that, you know, that not based on emotion, but based on what is intrinsically true for you. Okay? So number one is take five, okay? Take five. Number two, you know, how to get to the other side when the bottom falls out understand that it might have needed to happen okay sit with that for a minute like it might have needed to happen 
Because you know that sometimes the bottom has to drop off because that might be the only way you're going to move forward. Okay, that might be the only way you're going to move forward to do that next thing you need to do. Now, are there some witnesses out here? Brenda, Sandra, do you know anything about that? <laughs> Those of you who are watching, do have you ever did something only because there were no other options? Because something had to happen, okay? I mean, some of you may have not written your book because you, you didn't let it become a priority. You haven't put it on the list, like I said, and you're thinking that the opportunity will always be there, but it may not, you know? Things can happen that you may never get this opportunity again. You know, and then sometimes something has to fall apart in order for you to focus that sometimes things have to end, you know, um, like we don't want you to have to get sick, you know, but sometimes that's the only thing that will help you take care of yourself, you know, to make make your health a focus, you know, that a lot of times we're running and doing for so many other people that we're not taking care of ourselves. You know, we're like, oh, I got to make sure I can take care of this. I got to make sure I do this. But are you taking care of yourself? Are you listening? Like I said, in that five seconds, you usually know what you need to do. And it's the same thing with some things needing to happen in your life, because sometimes you don't move, you won't move forward or you won't let go of something unless something kind of catastrophic happens or something big happens or something drops, the whole bottom falls apart, okay? Like, fortunately, my car was not falling apart. You know, it was just like, huh, what is this? But the thing is, I feel like if I keep driving it, it will. <laughs> so I'm not going to keep doing something already in them five seconds already like, mm, this is not right. <laughs> Handle this. Take care of this. And so I'm saying that to you, that some things need to happen in order for you to put your attention on it, in order for you to focus on it in order for you to really maybe start writing that book that you put off, you know, because everything else is dropped off. Nothing else is working, but God's like, I need you to write that book. Okay. So sometimes things need to happen, you know, so that's one of the strategies, understanding that it needed to happen when the bottom falls out. Okay. And then number three, okay. I like this one because I'm a big believer in this one. And I think, um, I remember there was a, a, a pastor in our church and she didn't have any children when she first came to our church. But after she had kids, it was just like, you know, she got married, she had some kids. It was like she had better stories. She was always an amazing storyteller. But once she had these kids, oh my gosh, she had even better stories. Because <laughs> it was just like, now you're being challenged in a different way. Before you were a single woman running around the country, running around the world, seeing the world, visit, doing all kinds of stuff. But now that you got kids, you can't just run and jump anymore. You've got to, you got to, you know, take care of some other people. Other people have your attention, you know. So I think the point for number three is that it gives you a better story. And again, as storytellers, as authors to be, as writers, that we want the best story. And that sometimes, you know, the bottom falling out of that situation makes it more real for your readers. That sometimes, you know, people read your stuff and they're like, eh, you know, but other times it's just like, did that really happen? Wait, I got to go back and read that again. You know, I mean, situations, different things, like it's a better story. It's like, I've been to a number of weddings and I recently was at one, shout out to Destiny and Larry. And it was amazing. It was like, ah! the bride was singing coming down coming from outside the church down the aisle and it was just like oh it was so much it was a lot it was beautiful it was definitely you were like this guy put this together it anointed you know, all the terms that you can use for like yes and beautiful people beautiful spirits it was just amazing and because of where they came from, it's a better story of how they got to, to marriage because they both were in different places and how they came together. It was such a beautiful story and it made it that much more beautiful because of their story. You know, that other stories, it's like, it's not that it's a bad story, but sometimes things falling apart, things not working out, you know, um, make for a better story when it doesn't happen the way you plan for it. And again, you know, for those of you that, like you said, you wanted to write five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, maybe you needed to write that book now. Maybe the time had to pass, you know, and that because that book wasn't going to needed to be written before because it wasn't going to bless the people it needs to bless now. That your book coming out now is going to bless some people now. I would say that, you know, with the people that are working with, with my clients, my wonderful clients, it's just like some of the stories they're sharing, it's like, it's like we're in a season now where people are actually finally free to talk about some things. Like many of us grew up where you didn't talk about stuff. You didn't mention it. You didn't say anything about it. 
but the freedom now, you know, people are going to therapy, people are going, I just saw a post where they're like, you know, all this stuff that, you know, people were used to you not dealing with, you not saying, you not, it's, it's over now. People are being their authentic selves, which is a term we hear about a lot. But the thing is the freedom to speak your truth, the freedom to share what should have been told long time ago, like that was not available five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, but this pandemic for one, people being alone, people being in a house with people, they're like, uh huh, <laughs> or memories or different things you, you figured out how to do, you know, because you've been inside, you know, and now that you're, a f to, there's some freedom to go out, you know, be safe, you know, but it's still like, now you're like, huh, do I even want to do that anymore? Do I want to connect? Do I want to participate? Do I want to, you know, it's, it's like, you're really thinking about some things that might've been a default, you know, but it really wasn't anything you wanted to do, but you did it because, and now that things have fallen apart, you're like, you're really reconsidering some things. And the thing about it, your book coming out now is a better book because you're better. Okay. Can I say that again? It's a better book because you're better. Because a lot of times, you know, when we're writing and when I'm reading what, what authors are writing, it's like, they're not done with it yet. You know, they're still kind of wrestling with that story. Hey, Jennifer, they're not quite ready to release it because it's not through working itself through them. That you know someone is free to share their story when they're no longer broken by it. It doesn't cause pain or or hurt, tears of hurt. You know, it might be tears of joy, but it's not going to be where you can't get through it. Um, I think about, you know, growing up, you know, where, you know, someone might have shared a testimony at church or something or sang, but sometimes them singing it was them singing their own deliverance, you know, or doing a testimony, couldn't get through it because they were still going through it. And so sometimes you need to be on the other side of something or you need for everything to fall apart and fall away and all the, the, the things that keep you bound that you're unable to kind of um, do that thing, you know, that you need to do. You know, and so that story is better as a result of this. And I saw a message someone was like, they're not able to, to get on. We're on Book Coach Accelerator page, my Book Coach Accelerator page. So make sure that's where you go. That's where we do write it out. And so um, we've been um, talking about five strategies to get to the other side when the bottom falls out. And so our first point was take five. Okay, within the first five seconds of you learning about a situation, usually the answers are coming. It's just the, the other time is when you start wrestling with other things that's going on. And then number two, it needed to happen, okay? It needed to happen. Situations sometimes need to happen in order for you to get focused. And we've been on number three, where when the bottom falls out, it sometimes makes for a better story for you. That sometimes you need these things to fall away from you, to fall apart, <laughs> to not work any longer, for you to understand that it wasn't for you anyway that or it's time to move on it's you're in a new season and that's not gonna do, do you any more good that you've gotten everything you've needed out of that situation or that relationship or whatever it was that job you know but now it's a new season for you and that has to fall away and sometimes we don't want it to go sometimes we hold on to things that we need to let go of and so we're not able to kind of really um take hold of the thing that's in front of us because if you don't let go it's sort of like um the, the example is like for those trapeze artists, you know, it's like when they're on the swing and they need to catch the person that's coming towards them, they have to let go of the one they're holding in order to catch the hands. Like if they're holding on to the rope in order to catch the hands of the person that's coming towards them, they have to let go. And so is the same for us that sometimes we have to let go of some things in order to catch that next thing, you know, and those hands mean that there's help, there's support. There's someone in front of you that wants to help pull you to the other side. So be be ready <laughs> to let go, okay? Be ready to let go of some of those things so that you can get to the other side, okay? So that was number three. Number four, and this is always a good one, and this is one to just keep in mind no matter what you're doing, okay? Repeat after me. It's not about you. <laughs> it's not about you, okay? Um, I have, um, and as a, as a author and book coach, I'm, I read a lot too. So I've been reading, um, here's a book, Bamboozled by Jesus by uh, the comedian Yvonne Orji. And she is hilarious, okay? 
hilarious, okay? Loving reading that book. And sometimes you have to get out of your own head and take a look at something else in order to kind of refresh and remember why you're doing what you're doing. And so she calls um, the Bible the good book, D.A. good book. And she shares in their story, which is actually one of my favorite stories. And it's about Lazarus being raised from the dead. And she talks about, or the story talks about how Jesus did not come in time to save him from dying because he had been sick. His sisters had reached out, was like, yo, see if y'all can find Jesus. He's down the road a ways. See if you can bring him back. My brother's sick. And Jesus, not only did he not come back after he got the news, but he stayed some extra days. So by the time he got back, Lazarus was like good and dead, basically. And, but I love what he said, okay? He prayed, he looked at these people, he's like, show me where, where he is, show me where you put him. And he goes out there and he, he prays to the Father and he says, okay, God, I know you hear me when I pray. In fact, you always hear me when I pray, but for the sake of them, okay? For their sake, okay? And that's the point I'm trying to make. It's not about you, it's for their sake. Your book is not necessarily for you, it's part of it is you had to go through what you went through and it may not have always been pleasant. In fact, some of it might've been downright very difficult, but you went through that for the sake of someone else. Okay. For the sake of someone else, you know, and I love that Jesus said that because he knew <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna raise up Lazarus. Like, and God's gonna get the glory. I know what I'm gonna do. I already had it in mind when I stayed those extra days that, you know, because you've seen me as all these other things, I need you to see me in a new way. And that's the same for you, that when you you do your work for someone else, that's why when, when I work with you, when you take my course, when I work one-to-one -one with you, or if you're in a webinar, I talk about that who is your audience? Who is your book for? What is the point of your book? Because it can't just be for you. Because if it is, then it's a diary or it's a journal for your eyes only. You know, but if you really want to put a book out there that's going to serve some other people, then you have to know that it's not about you. So you have to kind of get out of, well, this is what I want. And it's like, it's not that it won't be your book in the way you want it, but being able to hear constructive criticism, being able to hear some things that this will make this better. You know, let's connect this. Okay, there's some, this part is disjointed. I'm not understanding what you mean by this because you jumped to that. You know, being able to hear that and being okay with it. Because keep in mind, anything that you see on TV, anything has been greatly edited, okay? Um, it's sort of like Photoshop. <laughs> it's like TV is Photoshop. You see how um, their hair and makeup is done wonderfully, you know? Fresh haircuts, like, you're like, these people just come out the barbershop when they do these shows? Yeah, they do. <laughs> and even when they're made to look badly, they still look good. Like, you know, I always marvel at the women who are like, oh, just wake it up oh, in full makeup. Who does that <laughs> but the thing is they want you to see them in a good light because if they really look like the way we look like when we get up they know people like don't nobody want to see all that <laughs> so always keep in mind who's your audience who you know what are you doing <laughs> thank you for that laugh yeah i feel that way because there are a couple people that i'm like y'all need to wear makeup at all times like don't no <laughs> put a little put a little something on your face for your audience like you know i kind of Got myself together for you guys because I knew I was going to be on the camera. So it's like we have to remember our audience. We're not doing it just for us. It's like it might be one of the things you need to do to get done what you need to do. But it's really like what value are you adding into someone else's life? You know, what are you presenting? What information are you sharing that's going to make somebody's writing better, their life better, their relationships better? You know, what are you adding to their life? Okay. And so... It's not about you. Keep that in mind. Point number four. And my last point, I said I was going to give you five strategies for how to get to the other side when the bottom falls out. And number five is surrender. Okay. That's always a big thing, but it's actually always the right thing to do. Surrender. Because the thing about it, you can't control stuff. Okay. You know, that's one of those, like, I can't control other people. I can't control the weather. <laughs> I can't control what happens when I leave my house. Like you can't control stuff. You can only control you. So surrender. And, and keep in mind, you will get published, but learn, you know, but part of the getting to publish is what you're learning about yourself in the process. You're learning about your habits. You're learning how well you write. You're learning even how much you want to write. You're learning, is this the story I want to tell? 
you know, and you're also learning things like, what's the story that I've been telling myself? Is that the correct story? Because I've shared with you guys and with, with other people that, you know, your readers are very smart. They know when you've missed something or you've, you haven't put the truth out there. They know when you're like skipping over parts, you know, and make you look good, for instance, you know, and that's even, you know, counselors know that, you know, when you tell a story, you're like, is that the whole story? Or just your version of the story. That's why it's just your version. It's their version. Then there's the truth. And so even when your audience is reading your book, they can tell if you've left parts out. And not to say that everything has to be put in there. Because some stuff is like, we ain't even putting that out there. I'm not putting my name on that book if you're going to put that in there. Okay? Some things, no. You know, whether we're protecting the innocent or the guilty, some things just don't need, you know, some things are, might be a mind at prayer. You might have to burn some, write a letter and burn it. <laughs> you know, everything doesn't have to go, but think about what part of your story that you're telling will benefit that audience. What part of it is going to help someone, you know, and again, there's a way to share that truth in a way that's, that's um, uplifting and encouraging. You know, we don't want people to feel bad after they reach the story. It's like, well, dad, go on. I thought I was going to be a better when I read this book. You know, you, you might want them to think about some things, but think about it in a way that's like, I got to do better. Um, another one of my uh, Nigerian author friends is uh, Lovia Jaye. She's got the do better guy, you know, about like, as people, can we do better? You know, so when you read her books, you're like, oh man, I cannot get on the plane acting a fool. Okay. To all the people out here doing that right now, it's like, uh, back up <laughs> or don't fly, <laughs> you know, but it's like, there are things that we can do better just because we know we can. It's a decision. Again, go back to number one, that five second take five. What can you do to make this experience pleasurable? Okay. Better for everyone around you. I know there are some calls I make like to Comcast or Verizon that it's like, I have to take five because <laughs> that's like, do not get upset no matter what they say. Keep your voice calm and light and talk like this. And it's like, thank you. Wow. And have an expectation that it's going to be an amazing conversation and everything is going to work, even if you have to wait for something, because that will make the difference and how that call goes and whether or not you get service or not. So surrender. Okay. You have no control. You call someone, you go somewhere. You have no control over how things are going to go, but you do have control over yourself and you have control over what story you tell or what story you've been telling. Because sometimes our view of something isn't really the, the the right view, you know, and not to say like you are absolutely entitled to how you see and felt about a situation, but it may not be the entire situation. You know how sometimes you hear a piece of something and you think that's it, or you, you meet someone or you see someone and you're like, wow, they're mean. And then years later, you're like, you know, I thought she was mean. Not knowing that that person might've just been focused or they just, you know, had been through stuff. Maybe they were tired and need a nap, <laughs> you know, but sometimes we get like a glimpse. So we get that photographic image of someone and that's the only picture we have in our head about them. And we haven't seen them in any other setting, but that one second or five minutes, we met them somewhere. You know, and so we have to kind of give people the benefit of the doubt that I am more than, you know, one segment of my life, you know, or one moment, you know, in this, the same way you want grace, you know, for all the moments of your life, we have to make sure that we're giving that grace as well to the others that we encounter and to the situations that we, we find ourselves in. And, and particularly give yourself some grace. It's just like, okay, you blew it yesterday. You know, it's like yeah, for all the people that's, that wants to diet. You know, that's always the day. Like you ain't been in the office for a year plus. The first day you go back, that day, the week you said you were going to eat right, they got donuts every day, right? You know it. You know what's going to happen. So it's like you have to make decisions about what you're going to do. And even if you don't always meet the expectation you set for yourself, give yourself grace. It's like do it tomorrow. Try it again. You know, the same with your writing. Okay, you didn't write today. Did you write today, y'all? Did y'all write today? If you didn't, then write, write, write later when we get off. I'm going to get off in a few minutes. So write later, <laughs> okay? And definitely write tomorrow. Write before the weekend's out. You know, take a look at what were your goals? What did you say you want to do? Did you say you want to get published by a certain day? Well, let's do it. Because, you know, take responsibility for yourself. 
because you're the one that make it happen or not. Okay. So surrender. That was number five. Surrender. Um, and then you'll be confident and able to share your story with ease and grace because you've allowed the process to happen for you. Okay. You've allowed it to happen for you. So a new word I've learned, that's it. D-A-S-S-I-T. -S -S -I, I love that. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> those are five strategies to get you through when the bottom falls out. And so just a quick recap for those that might've come in a little late that, um, take five, always take five. Those first First five seconds when a situation occurs or you have to make a decision about something, you usually can get the answer in those first five seconds if you just allow it to come to you. Number two, understand that sometimes it needed to happen. The bottom falling out needed to happen, okay? It was the only way that was going to get your attention and get you to focus. And number three, when that bottom falls out, sometimes it makes for a better story, okay? It makes for a better story. I've shared about... Um, going through cancer, losing my hair the first time I wore a wig. It flew off on Pennsylvania Avenue, about a block from the White House. I was chasing it across Pennsylvania Avenue. It was like, it made for a better story. Then it was just like, oh, I lost my hair. I got a wig. I went to work. No, me running across Pennsylvania Avenue, six lanes of traffic for those who have been in the D.C. area. Yeah, that was a much better story. And it happened. And then I got it and I put it on and I continue to go to my meeting and have lunch with my friend. You know, and she was just like, are you serious? Like, girl, you're crazy. <laughs> but it was a better story than I just walked the three blocks to her office and we had lunch. Okay, so always receive the better story. And then number five or number four, rather, it's not about you. See, my story helped her. She was actually afraid to see me because she's like, oh, my God, because she grew up where you know, they called it the C word. They couldn't even say cancer. They called it the C word. So her seeing me and having this funny, crazy experience enlightened her. It made her better. It made her understand that, oh my God, it's it's not that bad, you know, because I'm still here. And then number five, surrender. Surrender to the process. Surrender to what needs to happen. Because the thing is, you can't control everything that's going on anyway. You can only control yourself. Hey, Angela Robinson, good to have you here. And so again, that's it. Those are my five strategies to get you through when the bottom falls out. I'm Valerie McDowell, your writer, editor, author, book coach, and consultant. And if you have an idea of a book that you want to write, that you need some help, whether getting started, um, you're in the middle, or you need to get to the end, I'm here. I'll put a link down below if you want to reach out to me. That since 2018, 19, I've helped about 22 authors go from idea to publish. And we've got a lot more. We've got a couple ladies even online now who are working on their stories. So until... August. I'll see you the first Wednesday in August. Um, we meet on the first and third Wednesdays. and But I'll be online popping in, making sure because I got my eyes on you. Okay. All right. So until we see you next time, have a great evening. Bye.